Hi, this is Big Guy DIY Robert coming to you with another video regarding snowmobiling. Some of you know I'm an avid snowmobiler. Like, I love it. Absolutely love doing this sport. If it was a negative to it, cost has gotten completely out of hand. And our winters are getting substantially shorter now. It's, it's been quite obvious. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is maintaining the batteries, batteries on my sleds. Uh, for 22 years, I've always kept my snowmobiles in my garage and I've always put a battery tender on it. I don't pull the batteries out of my sleds because the location of them is a pain in the butt and there's a lot involved. Well, I don't say a lot, but just quite a bit involved in removing a battery out of a snowmobile versus, say, removing a battery out of a simple bow rider, a 17-foot bow rider, which I do pull the batteries out of those, and I bring them in my garage and put a battery tender on them. But for my sleds, never pull the batteries. I leave them in there attached all the time. So there are a bunch of products out there, for those who don't know. Uh, they're battery tender. And what's nice about them is not only do they help maintain the battery, but you can do a male-female connection. So I'm going to show you a couple of different kinds. <clears throat> by my store, or by my store, by my house, I have a place called Battery Plus. But I also have access to five automobile parts stores, all within 10 minutes of my house. I have a sled dealer that's within 15 minutes of my house. So I'm kind of in a very good location for getting certain things regarding parts and supplies for sledding and so forth. This product I've been using for quite a while, Battery Tender. What this is, this is an accessory. It is, how long is this? 18 inches long. So I don't know, looking at my sled, I don't think it'll be long enough. But I came across my buddy's 20... 21 or 22 sled and I noticed a pigtail hanging out the rear end of his seat and he told me it goes directly to the battery and I thought that was clever I mean I thought I was clever attaching it directly to my battery and opening up the hood and just plugging it in but the reason I'm going to change that setup is now that I have an enclosed trailer I can't open up my hood my side panels on my sled once they're in place and strapped down. So I'm going to switch it from opening up the panel to running the wire all the way through the back and having it come out the rear of my seat. So when my sled is in my trailer, I can attach my battery tender to it. Now on my trailer, I had it custom built. I chose uh, what I wanted in it for accessories and I put another video up um, going over that trailer but one of the accessories I put on there was a 110 outlet and here's a picture of the outside of the trailer of the 110 outlet with that outlet I can plug in an extension cord to this and it gives me power inside my trailer so inside the trailer I have two 110 sockets that I can plug anything into. But I kind of need more than just two. And so I didn't want to add additional wiring to it. So what I did is I found a power strip. And this power strip, each socket has an individual on off switch. So I forgot how many sockets it, sockets it is, but here's a picture of it. And you'll notice that this power strip has a right angle plug. Which is kind of important. That way when it's plugged into the socket, which is relatively, well not relatively, it's kind of low on the trailer, but it's at kneecap height. Uh, if you had a regular straight plug that went into it, you're going to whack your leg on that or something on there and you're going to break it off by doing a right angle plug. I reduce the chance of that happening. I also give the opportunity by using the 
power strip, uh, I can put things up higher so there's a less chance of me hitting it with my legs or body itself. I mean, I could hit it with my shoulder, but just being low, I have a tendency to hit more things when they're too low. So off this power strip, I can attach my battery switches and any other accessories I would like to run. So there at Battery Plus, the store sells battery tender and they sell this accessory separate. Um, I was hoping for something around four feet, five feet long. I'd rather have extra length. So if this is not long enough, which I'm pretty positive it is not, I'm gonna show you how to extend the length of this. They also had another product there And this is another type of battery tender. It too, if you look here, comes with that kit as well attached to the battery, but it's too short. So what I'm gonna be doing on this is I bought an extension kit. If you look here, how long is this? Three feet. So I don't know which one I'm gonna use on this 800 so I got two slides to do I got a 600 and 800 e-tech to do but I'll show you how to do the installation of these and how to kind of snake it back to the rear of your sled so the nice thing about it is now when I pull into the trailer bring the trailer home I can just put the extension cord right to it and the battery tenders will already be attached and the batteries will be fresh while the trailer sits in my driveway. So let's turn the camera around and I'm gonna show you what I have so far on this. So here's the current battery tender and you can see how short it is. I have one of these on my battery for the boat because during the summer months, I always have to keep that boat battery plugged in. It, from, uh, the boat always drains that battery to zero. Now when you attach battery tenders, don't attach it to the solenoid. That's the worst thing you can do. This is not designed to charge your battery. Attach it to the battery. So here's my positive, here's my negative. And yes, some people do get colors mixed up. Positive is always red. Notice that, red, red, red. And negative is always black. Now. Depending on access to the battery, if you don't have access to the negative at all, you can ground it to the frame. Because this here, as it goes underneath the battery, is actually attached right below here. Actually, that's it right there. That's the screw. That's the grounding screw for the battery. So we're going to remove this. And what I'm going to do is it's going to be snaked up through here. It's going to go underneath this part of the fuel tank, because this is my fuel tank right here. And we're going to go up under this panel, underneath my seat, and it'll stick out right here in the back. And it will not interfere with my bag at all. I might even, thinking about it, is to put on the old beak tailgate thing there as well just to keep it inside that. I don't know, we'll see what happens as I start this. So let me set this camera up and we'll start taking this apart. Oh, price of these, uh, this was, this was like 15 bucks, I think, for the battery tender one. And then this was around the same price. And then there were several different power um, chargers, automatic chargers. Make sure you choose one that not only maintains but can also charge the battery and this one will do a variety of batteries. This is what I call the beak. This attaches to the rear of my seat. That comes over and you get the idea. I might put that back on um, just so the cord 
is inside of here. Yeah, I, from this side here, it can come in, just sit in there. All the skidoo seats, at least, I don't know what year it started, but this is a 2012. All of them have a little piece up here in the front you pull up, and then the seat slides right off. My sled has an electric seat, so there is a wire here already snaked through. And that's the wire I can see by bending this up, I can see it coming in through the top part of the tank. If you need to take this off, you have to take your fuel cap off, and then there is a O-ring that actually spins on underneath this fuel cap that holds this down. So if you needed to really lift this up, that's how to do it from this point here. But I'm not gonna do that. I don't feel it's necessary. So disconnecting. First disconnect the ground. Don't disconnect the positive first because you can send sparks and then short circuit something. It's better just to do the ground. On these batteries, you're gonna lose this nut. So keep an eye open for it. This is what your screw goes into when your terminal is connected inside your battery. interesting is if you look at this one and then look at this one I just noticed something that's new to it and that's an inline fuse it's probably a 2 amp fuse Seven point five regular automotive two prong fuse. Holy cow! And I'm gonna put some dielectric grease on that because that should not be stuck in there that like that. We'll take care of that later. So how long is eighteen inches? Not even remotely close to what I need. So this is what I like about this setup is you have this weather boot that goes over the end. My old one, which I could have just lengthened it, but there's two things. It does not have the weather boot because it's not designed to be out in the elements and I don't have the inline fuse. So, to lengthen this, there's a couple ways of doing this. Let me grab some wire and show you. So, the wiring I'll be using to lengthen this is 12 AUG. And it's basically, you got two different types of wires. You got a single strand or something I use a lot is this is what they use in the marine industry still a 12 AUG but there's two wires inside the wires inside are encased in their own plastic like this and then you have a second casing going around those two wires this we use in the marine industry because it can take a pretty good beating let's see yeah, this is 16 AUG, but it'll still work because you're just doing a trickle charge, not like you're jumping something. 
So when you're doing this, you're gonna cut, I'm gonna cut it back further right here because I'm gonna use butt connectors to reconnect that. Let me show you what a butt connector is. So these are butt connectors. One end of the wire comes in this end and then the other end of the wire comes out. These are shrink tube butt connectors. This is a regular butt connector, which I would highly say do not use that because if nothing shrinks, you can't seal your connection. Water gets in that, it'll start corroding your wiring. You want to use waterproof butt connectors. So I have the new one attached. I cut my wire. I wanted to show you this up closely. This is a double casing on this wire. So you have an outside casing which is black and then an inside casing which is red. And then my wire. So I was trying to, I wanted to match the gauge or the aug of this wire. So 12's, 12 is pretty close to that. But I think uh, my 16, so I'm going to strip this off and attach that positive side. Now in this, these, um, I've seen them come in two different colors. I've seen them come in red and black, red and yellow. I think this one is black inside. Yeah, it's black. But if it's yellow, yellow is ground. Uh, because this is marine, yellow is ground on a boat as well as black. That's why it would come in yellow. So let me set the camera up and we're going to continue. Oh, I wanted to show you. That's what I'm following is that that wire right there and that goes right up in here somewhere I think my opening is up here and it'll come down this way if you want to know where you can get this type of wire this marine grade wire uh, you can get it online at any um, marine store or if you're near the water you can go to any marine store and buy it, it usually comes in hundred foot lengths yeah hundred feet It's just following the exact same path as all my other wiring, which I have all zip tied. So, <clears throat> so I don't have an overload of zip ties. What I tend to do is I cut my zip ties all off, add the new wire, and then re zip tie it all again with new zip ties. Now, before I cut this, it's important to know what's positive and what's negative on this end. I was about to cut the positive end and I just realized I don't have a marking on here to show that this is positive. So, there's two things we could do. One, I can do a zip tie on here. I know that's positive. But the, the other thing I noticed slide this up. Cut them so they're equal lengths. I'm gonna take off the outside boot. See the color. They did it for you. That's awesome. So 
So they already mark it inside here. So I don't need the shrink. I don't need the uh, zip tie on here to show me what's positive, what's what's uh, negative. I like that. Torch. Pick this up. And now you can see the connections are sealed and they're waterproof, so I'm not going to get any water intrusion. So now I just have to zip tie this wire down. These zip ties you don't have to cut. They're called twist and zip or twist cut or something like that. work is you grab a pair of pliers and just twist the wire or twist the zip tie and there's a blade in here that cuts it so it's flush so you won't get that little edge here that always cuts your fingers Now we're going to work the wiring towards the back here. Now there's no way to secure the wiring here, anywhere in here. So I'm going to go on the inside of this hook the seat. Bring it out the back. So, we install that bird's beak. Sorry, the camera shut off. Don't know why. But now here's my pigtail. Right in the back of the sled. Now I no longer have to open my side. There we go. So now I can just drive my sled in, secure it, open up the back, plug my battery in, and that's it. So, this was an idea, if you have a battery tender, how to kind of maximize the usage without having to open up your sled at all. 
or if you haven't already and you need to extend it, do it to the back of the sled if you can. On the 600 E-Tech, which is a Renegade model, I'll do the same thing. I don't recall if I have a rear luggage on there or not. I don't think I do, but the pigtail would just stick out the back end. It just makes it a lot easier. So, that's it. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Any questions, rifle them below. This is Big Guy DIY, Robert, signing off. Have an awesome snowmobile season.